Okay, welcome back. Today we are going to be continuing our Pori map tutorials and a little bit of Pori script. We are going to be uh, talking about the triggers, uh, the trigger events, uh, and how they work. So the trigger events are a lot similar to you know our you know our signposts and our event objects, uh, where they have a script that we can attach to them, um, but they're a little different in the fact that obviously they trigger when you step on them. Um, but they also trigger depending on whether or not the variable that they're assigned is set to a specific value. So if you're opening your regular vanilla decomp project, you probably see four triggers right here. There's actually five because you can stack triggers and there are going to be two on this right corner. Now these triggers use um, a var little root town state variable that you know the developers uh, use to control the flow of the pot in the starting town. Um, we are going to be using this new little root town state variable that I um, you know created. Um, it's just a random variable, an unused variable that I took over. So just take over an unused variable if you are following along in this tutorial. I specifically talked more about it in our last. Hori script video on how to do movement commands, which is going to be a little uh, necessary in this video, but uh, it's pretty simple enough that you don't actually have to go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. But anyway, um, so these the five triggers that you'll see here normally are based on you know whether or not you've gotten your Pokemon yet, uh, whether or not you have uh, seen your rival, so that you can come out here like. When you first go, the girl's going to block you and just say you can't go out there without a Pokemon. But when you go and see your rival and you come back out, obviously she's going to be standing there waiting for you, being like, oh, you need to go help Professor Birch. Um, but we, since we've created this whole new starter setup and this new rival, um, we want to erase all of that because we just want to be able to leave the town once we get our starter. And we want to be blocked from leaving the town if we don't have our starter. So in the last video, we had this variable, little root town state, and we set it to zero as long as you um, hadn't picked up a Pokeball yet inside of the lab. And then once you battle uh, May, we stop setting it to zero and we leave it at one. Uh, May sets it to one, May's battle scripts. So uh, this these triggers here, we only want them to um, be triggered when the value is zero because when it's zero, before we've picked up a Pokeball, we don't want to be able to leave. But as soon as we finish our rival battle, then we want to be able to leave. Um, so once the once the variable is equal to one, then this this trigger will no longer trigger anymore. If you want to have multiple triggers that trigger here, depending on multiple different variable states, then again you have to stack them, um, which again Game Freak does in this case because they want to block you depending on multiple states um, of you know you being in Little Root. So. Um, that is the basics of how triggers work in Porymap. Now we are going to actually assign it a script so that we can talk a bit about it. Um, so it is just going to keep, it'll, 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 if you just give it like a message box, it's just going to play the message box and let you keep going. If you want to actually be blocked though, you need a really short movement script. So we are going to go over here. Um, so this is just the script that I'm assigning to the trigger block path. Um, these, this is just the trigger, and they're two separate triggers, but I'm giving them the same script because it doesn't matter. You can give them the same script. It's the same code. All I want it to do is say, you can't go here without a Pokemon, and then I want it to walk us down so that we have to walk back onto the trigger if we want to leave. Um, if you don't walk down, then they can just walk forward, and they're not walking onto a trigger, so the game's not going to stop them in their tracks. So we want to lock all. We want to send a message box that says you don't have enough Pokemon yet, and we're going to apply movement which again is pretty simple. You just need the ID of the object you're moving and then the movement script. Um, in this case, we're using this constant here that stands for the player's ID. I don't remember what the player ID number actually is, if it's zero or if it's like something else, but um, we can just use this constant and the game automatically converts it to the player ID. Uh, it might even be variable depending on the map we're in, but I don't know. Either way, we use this movement to apply this movement to the player object, and here we just want the player to walk down one time. That's all it takes to reset the trigger um, space, so we just apply the movement, and then we wait for the movement to end, and then we release all. And that is all you need to do to set up this trigger. And once we get our Pokemon, again, we'll be able to walk right over this, and it won't trigger. So I've already compiled it, um, and we have it up and running here, so we're going to look at it. So here we're walking around. We go up, you do not have a Pokemon yet. 
and then it moves us down and the message goes away. You do not have a Pokemon yet. We can check this one. This one also works. Now if we go and we get a Pokemon, I don't want to name it. It's okay. We battle our rival really quick. Now we can go past. And I hadn't actually deleted this next part in Route 101 yet, so now I'm stuck inside of Route 101 uh, because there are a bunch of triggers in this route that don't let you leave if the variable state is set, if the var little root town state variable is set to a specific thing. I believe they use that variable. Um, but you also, if you're going to want to delete, uh, if you're going to want to, you know, use your own plot setup in Little Root, you're going to want to delete all of this in Route 101 too. You're going to want to just, you know, delete all of these triggers here so that you can leave and you are going to want to delete that and delete that and delete that and delete that and just delete it all. Um, so yeah, that is uh, basic trigger scripts. Um, and you know, you can use them all throughout. Uh, you know, you could put trigger scripts here so that Kyogre would move towards you and shake the ground. Um, things like that are easy to do with trigger scripts and uh, they're pretty simple. So I'm going to end the video there. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. Otherwise we will see you on the next one.